Good morning, students. Today we are going to read about the Shehnai of Bismillah Khan. So, before I read this chapter for you and explain, I would like you to look at these pictures and try to find out who are they and what instruments they are playing. Let's look at the first picture, a man playing flute. The picture is not very clear, I understand, but the maestro of flute was Pandit Hari Prashad Chaurasya. The second picture is of a sitar, one person playing sitar. Again, the picture is not clear, but what I have found out, the master, the master of sitar was Pandit Ravi Shankar. The third picture, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because there are two women playing violin. The instrument, I can tell you, they are violins. Because there are many names who had been famous and good at playing violins. I'll tell you some names. They are Lal Guri Vijay Lakshmi, M. Narmada, L. Subramaniam. There are quite few names. So I can't really say it's a matter of investigating more, but definitely I'll try to find out sooner or later and I'll let you know. The fourth picture is quite famous and can be recognized because you must have seen him on television playing tabla. He was also in advertisement of tea. The name was Taj. So this person's name is Zakir Hussain. The fifth picture, the instrument name is Sarod and the person, the man who is playing is Amjad Ali Khan, Ustad Amjad Ali Khan. The sixth picture really can't figure it out, either the instrument or the person who is playing. So definitely we'll find out uh, later. And the seventh one, the instrument, I'm still confused because the, it's not a complete picture of the instrument. It could be either Veena or Surbahar. Both instruments look quite similar and the person who had been master of playing Veena was Chitti Bab. The last picture, this is the person we are going to read about. His name was Ustad Bismillah Khan and the instrument is Shehnai. So I will just read the paragraphs for you and I will take you further. Emperor Aurangzeb banned the playing of a musical instrument called Pungi in the royal residence for it had a shrill, 
unpleasant sound. So you must have heard, um, I'm sure that being a student you know who was Emperor Aurangzeb. So he banned that instrument which name was Pungi. So it was banned playing in the uh, royal courtyard. Pungi became the generic name Oh, sorry, well, I'll, I'll tell you why it was banned, because it had a shrill, unpleasant sound. Shrill is like a high-pitched sound. So the sound uh, produced by this instrument was unpleasant. It was not nice. It was not melodious to uh, their ears. So Pungi became the generic name for reeded noise makers. So after it got banned, it became a generic name, just common name for uh, reeded uh, noisemakers. Reeded is like um, is uh, wind instruments which have reeds like the flute, the cap, uh, the clarinet. I'll explain it in an easy way. Is basically is talking about shape. So it's all about the shape. The reeded means the shape. Few had thought that it would one day be revived. So obviously, uh, when it got banned, and uh, some people thought that it would be revived and would definitely come back later on. A barber of a family of professional musicians who had access to the royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pungi. Tonal quality, the sound of tone uh, is related to music, related to tone. So a barber, you know barber, who is barber, a person who cuts hair and things. So that barber belonged to a famous musician's family who had access to the royal court. So he used to uh, visit the royal court of uh, Aurangzeb. He decided to improve the tonal quality of the pungi. He chose a pipe with a natural hollow stem that was longer and broader than the pungi and made seven holes on the body of the pipe. When he played on it, closing and opening some of these holes, soft and melodious sounds were produced. So what he did, he chose a natural pipe. It could be obviously made of like uh, uh, there are some plants who are like uh, they they are built like pipes. So he chosen uh, a pipe that was longer in size and broader than the pungi. And when uh, and what he did, he made seven holes on on it. So when he played on it, closing and opening fingers, so that thing, that instrument produced melodious sound, melodious music. He played the instrument before royalty and everyone was impressed. Royalty, like the people of that uh, royal courtyard. So he played that instrument in front of them and everyone praised him. Everyone was impressed. The instrument so different from the pungi had to be given a new name. As the story goes, since it was first played in the Shah's chambers and was played by a Nai, the barber. Uh, commonly in India, the barber is called Nai in Hindi. The instrument was named the Shehnai. So, 
when that instrument was invented obviously it had to be named it had to be given a name so it is said that because it was firstly played in shah's court shah yeah so royal court shah's court and it was invented by a nai a barber so that's how it got named shehnai the sound of the shehnai began to be considered auspicious and as we know uh, that uh, wherever there is any occasion like wedding a function and even in temple so you could see um, you know people playing shehnai so this is what it's saying that uh, the sound of shehnai began to be considered auspicious like you know good as occasions is uh, like um, uh, good for that uh, occasion and for this reason it is still played in temples and is an indispensable component of any north indian wedding indispensable uh, is without which a piece of work cannot be done that means it was considered that without playing shehnai a wedding could not be or that work cannot be completed well uh, it depends really that uh, culture and the area where we live but this is how we know that uh, uh, mostly in weddings and functions uh, in temples the shehnais are played in the past the shehnai was part of the naubat or traditional ensemble of nine instruments found at royal courts uh, let me pronounce this again ensemble ensemble basically is it should be pronounced like uh, ensemble it should be pronounced like ensemble naubat is actually it's addressed to that court and that was red fort the red fort kila so in the past the shehnai was part of the naubat so only shehnai could be played in the red fort in the naubat or traditional ensemble of nine instruments found at royal courts so there were nine instruments and those instruments were authorized by the royal court that only these instrument could be played in the royal court yet royal court sorry till recently it was used only in temples and weddings the credit for bringing this instrument on to the classical stage goes to ustad bismillah khan so during the like um, uh during that time the shehnais were only played in uh, royal courts and uh, also after that it was played in weddings temples etc on this kind of occasions so the credit of bringing this instrument to the classical music goes to bismillah khan so it is said that uh, uh, it was bismillah khan who brought that instrument shehnai into the list of classical music instruments as a 5 year old bismillah khan played gilli danda 
near a pond in the ancient state of Dumrao in Bihar. So now uh, the writer is talking about uh, when Bismillah Khan was a young child, five years old. So he used to play Gilli Danda, that's a game. I don't know if you uh, students have seen that are played. It's a kind of like a, a small wooden thing uh, that's called Gilli and Danda. It should be not more than uh, this size. So they hit on the Gilli and it flies basically, it goes. And people playing uh, involved or participating in this game, they have to catch that Gilli. So he played Gilli Danda near a pond in the ancient state of Dumrao uh, in Bihar. So somewhere in Bihar, there is a place called Dumrao. That's where he was playing. He would regularly go to the nearby Biharji temple to sing the Bhojpuri Chaita. Chaita is a kind of song, local folk song. Uh, well, I don't know whether it's folk, but uh, it's a local Bhojpuri song, Chaita. So he used to go a nearby Biharji temple. That was the name of that temple, Biharji temple. And he used to sing Bhojpuri Chaita. At the end of which he would earn a big laddu weighing 1.25 kg, a prize given by the local Maharaja. This happened 80 years ago and the little boy has travelled far to earn the highest civilian award in India, the Bharat Ratna. I'm sure most of you know that uh, Bismillah Khan, Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded Bharat Rant by the Indian government. So this is the writer is talking about that at the age of five when he was uh, you know, singing Bhojpuri Chaita and uh, the local Maharaja used to give him a prize and what was the prize? That was a big laddu weighing 1.25 kg. So he's saying that that was his journey from that age to the that moment when he received the Bharat Ratna Award. Born on 21st March 1916, Bismillah belongs to a well-known family of musicians from Bihar. So that was his uh, birth date, 21st of March and year 1916. And Bismillah Khan belonged to a famous well-known family of musicians from Bihar. His grandfather, Rasul Baks Khan, was the Shehnai Nawaz of the Bhojpur King's Court. So his grandfather, uh, Ustad Bismillah Khan's grandfather, whose name was Rasul Baks Khan, he was the Shehnai player, uh, where he was Bhojpur King's Court. Bhojpur King's Court. His father, Paigambar Bucks, and other paternal ancestors were also great Shehnai players. So basically, uh, most of the family members were Shehnai players. The young boy took to music early in life at the age of three when his mother took him to his maternal uncle's house in Benares now Varansi. There is a city, uh, I'm sure everybody knows Varansi. It used to be Banaras. Uh, that's in Uttar Pradesh. So his mother took him there, took him to the maternal uncle's house. Bismillah was fascinated watching his uncle practice the Shahnai. So he got attracted that how 
his uh, maternal uncle used to play Shahnai, uh, his uh, Shahnai's practice. Soon, Bismillah started accompanying his uncle Ali Baks, whose name was Ali Baks, to the Vishnu temple of Banaras, where Baks was employed to play the Shahnai. So, what happened? He started accompanying his maternal uncle, whose name was Ali Baks. And where Ali Baks used to go? Vishnu temple, Banaras, to play Shahnai. Ali Baks would play the Shahnai and Bismillah would sit captivated for hours on end. So his maternal uncle Ali Baks used to play Shahnai there and uh, Bismillah Khan had to sit there captivated means like uh, obviously he was forced to sit there. Slowly he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day. So slowly uh, he also started getting lessons of music and uh, he started playing instrument and um, practicing as well. For years to come, the temple of Balaji and Mangala Maya and the banks of the Ganga became the young apprentice favorite horns. Apprentice is like, um, uh, you know, the uh, young worker you can also say uh, young uh, practitioner you can also say and haunts is the same haunt like you when uh, you get haunted by ghosts but not the exactly same meaning here here it's different meaning a place frequented frequently uh, visit by a particular person meaning so where he used to sit and play some people started coming and listening his Shehnai's music regularly haunts where he could practice in solitude so Obviously, you know, like um, when you're doing practice of especially music, then you need a peaceful place. Nobody uh, should disturb you. So solitude means like a <coughs> lonely place. The flowing waters of the Ganga inspired him to improvise and invent ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shahnai. And because he used to sit nearby the Ganga river. So the writer is saying the flowing waters, the wave of the uh, waters of Ganga, it inspired him, inspired Bismillah Khan to improve his skill, improve the uh, like uh, ragas, the tones and uh, that it was said that it was impossible to reach in the range of Shehnai's music. Means nobody could play that kind of rag through Shehnai. So he did that. Bismillah Khan played that kind of uh, uh, rag through his Shehnai. That's all for the day and uh, hope to catch up with you in next video see you soon enjoy your day ahead if there's any query or question or clarification required don't forget to make your notes and discuss with me in the online classes thank you bye bye